The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. This is a very special one and one that holds very near and dear to our hearts because college football season is finally coming to a close, which is a sad time, but it's also a very exciting time because it's time for the national championship. We've got the number one Michigan Wolverines going against the number two Washington Huskies. Uh, this is a, a very fun matchup when we look at it. Uh, we had an amazing a uh, couple of matchups in the playoffs. We got to talk about those and just how awesome those two games were. And it felt like the committee got it right, even though they didn't, but they did. And it was a confusing situation. But looking at the, at the playoffs, it was such a fun playoffs to look at and, and to break down. Uh, but then coming to this game, this national championship game, it's it's a fun one. And, and we're going to talk a lot about it. But before we get too far, far into it, um, I'm going to go ahead and first bring in my co-hosts for this morning, uh, for us, I guess, this morning. Um, I've got Jeremy over here in Sioux City, just on the other side of Sioux City. How you doing, man? Doing pretty good, Then, Really looking forward to the college championship because you did say it the best, and I will have to say this is the best that the committee do. But at the same time, we all know it's not right. But at the same time, this is the best we've seen the committee do in a long, long time. But it's definitely going to be a really good battle between, obviously, Washington and Michigan. The The big thing I think is going to be, obviously, a big quarterback battle. Then I think is also going to be a really good defensive battle for the both teams. Then whoever comes out on top of this has definitely earned it, obviously, this year. That's why it's called the national championship. But, I mean, looking forward to it. This this is definitely a game I'm really anticipating for, and I'm not looking forward to college season ending, but that just means it's getting close to the next season, and with all the changes, it's definitely going to be a fun season next year. Yeah, yeah, I mean, looking at it, too, like what, what, what we're talking about is if, you know, all the controversy that goes into it, uh, it it's regardless of all the controversy, um, Blake, it was still the, the two, really the four best teams that got in, and it feels like the two best teams made it out of those games, but the man from Mobile, Alabama, how you doing? What's up, guys? Glad to be here. Uh, ready for Monday night. I, I think it's going to be a phenomenal game. I think uh, we have a heck of a matchup on our hands. I think the playoff committee did an excellent job. Uh, I think the only place that you could really argue of where they got it wrong would be leaving the Georgia Bulldogs out. I think back-to-back -back champions, 29 wins in a row, and you lose a three-point game in the SEC championship and you get left out of the playoffs. I think that's the only gripe that anybody could have. Uh, Florida State, hate it for you. Uh, you got beat 63-3, to and your whole team quit on you. So I, I don't want to hear another word about Florida State and uh, and them getting left out because, uh, you know, you're just – you're just feeding into the era that we live in, guys, and and that's to quit. That's to quit when times get tough. That is to uh, just give up on everything and and you know bounce and and, yeah, and go it, somewhere else. It's it's one of those situations where I hate I hate that they didn't get in because of everything they were able to accomplish, even with with their third string quarterback winning the ACC championship game yep. with a third string mm -hmm. quarterback. I I hate that for them. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, we, you know, I think you and I have always agreed where it's like, yeah, they, they went undefeated. It sucks. I'm, I'm not going to tell you it doesn't, but I, I mean, it's, just, it just doesn't feel like that's the four best teams. And that's kind of yep. where it breaks down to how do you actually want to do it? Do you want the four most deserving teams or do you want the four best teams? And that's, that's really what I think the, the committee kind of boiled down, boiled it down to. It, the, the, look, everybody that says, well, it's got to be the four best teams. Well, it, there also has to be some deserving in there too now. Yeah, yeah, like, for sure. Like, I mean, it, you you it, can't be a, a best team if you're not deserving of it. I, I don't think. Yeah. I, well, and, and so, I think I think that what we came down to was that the only real way to make this fair is open it up to six. Yeah, definitely. Because my my thing is is like if you want to say the best team, all right, within well this whole time, this whole time, like, like in 2010, Alabama, all right. They went nine and three in the regular season, all right, and they lost on some fluky, fluky stuff. Those three games, all right, they were beating Auburn twenty four to seven. They lost twenty eight twenty seven. Uh, they had uh, the Garcia throw uh, in South Carolina, and then they lost to LSU at LSU on a tight end reverse. All 
All right, like that. It was just really fluky that year. But if you really want to break it down, if we had the playoffs back then, you you could have said, "Hey, well, Alabama's ranked ninth in the country, but they are one of the four best." Like it's just there's got to be some deserving in there, you know. Yeah, and yeah, and for sure, people were people were saying that Washington should have been left out for Georgia. Like that's that's insane. That is yeah, insane. Well, and, no, and I think Michael, that's. I think that's people that didn't watch the Pac-12 this year, acting like the Pac-12 yep. is just an offensive, mm-hmm. uh, you know, conference. You know, the Pac-12 wasn't very tough this year. This was the toughest year the Pac-12 has ever been. I, I don't, I don't recall the Pac-12 ever being this strong. What a swan song it was for the Pac-12, and I'm super happy for that. Yep. Um, you know, just just looking at it, man. I, I don't know. It was. It was it was a really fun year in the Pac-12 because you had Oregon looking like they could be national champions. You had Washington looking like they could be uh, national champions. Uh, Washington State had a really good run this year, uh, and then you you ha- even had Oregon State having a good run this year. USC had struggles, but I don't think they were any worse than they were last year. And last year they were considered to be a team that could make it into the playoffs. So I mean, you you just look at that entire conference, everyone from the top to bottom, Arizona. We talked about Arizona earlier. Earlier on, it was it was such such a swan song for that conference. And it was mm-hmm. so amazing uh, to see it. But before we get too much further into it, Jeremy, I think we have a word from our friends over at Big Frig. Oh, we can always talk a lot about Big Frig, but we only have a little bit of a time span. But Big Frig, guys, I'm I'm going to tell you this. I sincerely love Big Frig as much as Josh and Blake do. We've all got Big Frig apparel, and I got my Tumblr in here that I don't know if you can see it from a glare that we had a little bit of an issue, but you can see it probably a little bit good. We have our custom logo engraved into my Tumblr and all of our Tumblrs that we have. Then just even looking outside of the other products, like the Badlands coolers is what I have and Josh has as well. I sincerely love my cooler. I take it everywhere I go when I'm going on a trip, like if I'm going to – um, if I'm going on vacation or if I'm going on a fishing trip or a hunting trip or whatever, just because I like to have my my goodies like my my lunch meat sitting in the cooler. Then the nice thing about the cooler that it is inside the cooler that there's a little basket that you can put that meat and the cheese and whatnot in there. It's really, really convenient, really handy, dandy. Then there's also a little slot in there that divides as a cutting board. And that makes it a little bit easier for when if one of my buddies will usually bring cube cheese when I always tell him to bring sliced cheese and you know how it goes. Then um, we'll always have um, something to cut it on stuff. I was just trying to find a rock to cut it on that we use that cutting board for whenever the time gets good. And just the the little itty bitty specs that you also see with Big Friggin on their coolers, like the drain plugs. It's a drain plug you think we're talking about. But you like you'll see other competitors just have like little plastic tabs on them. No, Big Frig, it's actually a corkscrew drain plug to where it's heavy duty, then that thing ain't breaking unless you hit it with a hammer. I can tell you that. I'm not saying I tested that out, but it's true. Um guys, I sincerely tell you every time. Go to bigfrig.com and use the code RISING220 down below in the description. You'll get 20% off on your order. That is R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-2-0. And tell Brock and Big Frig that we sent you guys. And like I always got to say, it's like my trademark. You will not be disappointed, ladies and gentlemen. So <laughs> go around over to bigfrig.com. And like I said, use the code RISING220 for 20% off your order. And like I said, tell, the, tell Big Frig that Rising to, Rising to the Education sent you. Yeah, it's it's an amazing product. We have, I pretty much always have mine filled up with coffee uh, or water, one of the mm-hmm. two, and ready to roll with us here on our episodes. But uh, another thing too, just make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. That helps us out greatly. We're looking for a tremendous 2024. We had an amazing 2023, uh, kind of getting boosted and and really just a big year for growth for us. So huge thanks to all you guys for supporting us. But uh, guys, let's go ahead and get into this matchup for this national championship game. I, I mean, we're, we're talking about how good this season was. I think for you know for for Blake, you and I, our our teams, we had an exciting year for us. Maybe not the year you wanted to kind of ending uh, for Auburn, but mm-hmm. still an exciting year. Seeing what you're building and seeing what's what's you know it, it kind of coming to fruition and what's actually being built there. And then of course at Oklahoma, seeing the bounce back that you had, and now. Uh, you know, the big news from Oklahoma that they got rid of their, their defensive coordinator. And it was really more or less that uh, – so Brent Venables said, hey, we want you to stay on the staff still, um, but I want to go a different way for D.C. 
And Ted Roof just said, no, I really like coaching. I'm sorry, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take my talents elsewhere, uh, you know, somewhere else. And uh, so, you know, it was one of those kind of things we bring in. Uh, now I'm forgetting his name, but from uh, Jacksonville State, uh, de- defensive coordinator over there. Just big things. And I think just looking at our schools, but then you look at everywhere else, like we said, the Pac-12 doing well. Uh, you got you got teams like JMU that had an amazing year this year that made it very exciting. Uh, and then Liberty having an undefeated season up until their bowl game. Uh, just all kinds of teams that, you know, and M- Missouri. How about throw Missouri in there? Uh, Missouri really being like the third best SEC team this year. That was exciting. Uh, just, just everything that was going on, it just felt like, uh, you know, it felt like this was definitely one of those one of those good years in college football outside of some of the extra extracurriculars like the NIL and transfer portal and all that kind of stuff and opt outs and but man it was it was a fun year but now it boils down to the national championship uh, I, I guess before we dive in and I, I want to keep our cards close to the close to the chest before revealing who we think is going to win or anything like that or even getting into it but what are you guys most looking in, looking forward to with this national championship? I'll start off with you, Blake. The Washington offensive line versus the Michigan defensive line. Thank you. That, that, that's the biggest. That's the biggest matchup. Uh, let's just say the Michigan front seven, honestly, because I think that was one thing that Michigan did well, really, really well uh, against Alabama was Michigan fired. They fired up a lot of pressure and put it on Jalen Milrow. And I think in order for for Mich- for Michigan to have success Monday night, you're going to have to fire up some pressure and get to Michael Penix because you can't let him sit back there in the pocket and just pick you apart like he did Texas. All right? I think Washington, you flip on the other side, and I think can Washington's D-line – get the same pressure on J.J. McCarthy because I think Washington holds – I mean, I don't think I know that Washington holds uh, a huge, huge uh, quarterback difference right here. I mean, it's not even close. Michael Penix is night and day from J.J. McCarthy. But J.J. McCarthy makes big plays when they need to be made. Um, But if you let Michael Penix just sit in the pocket, he's going to pick you apart. It's. I mean, there's those receivers out there. You got Odunze. You got McMillan, Polk. All those cats out there. Uh, if you didn't watch, like Josh said, if you didn't watch the Pac-12 this year, and and you just think that uh, they're they're just high flying and you know they just score a bunch of points. That's di- look. It, it was different this year. They played a little defense out there this year. Washington's defense. They got the kid, the Trice kid. Uh, on the edge, I believe. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. yeah Brent, Brendan stud. Trice. Brendan Trice. Yeah. yeah, stud. Stud, absolute stud. Uh, wreaked havoc on Quinn Ewers the other night. Uh, had a year. I know when they were playing Oregon in the Pac-12 title game, he was just all in Bo Nix's grill every single play of the night, man. Uh, it, ki- that kid's a dude, man. So th- that's my biggest X factors is the line of scrimmage Monday night. Can the Pac-12, can they bow their necks – and and get the respect on the on the way on the way out the door because that's always been the biggest knock. The Pac-12 can't compete in the trenches. They can't get it done. They can't block on the O line against the Big Ten or the SEC, and they can't pressure the quarterback against the Big Ten or the SEC. They can't play bully ball. Well, we're about to see Monday night because Michael Penix Jr. We had an episode about this. And people were in the comments saying, oh, you think Michael Penix Jr. should have won the Heisman? There's no way he got snubbed. Whatever. Boy, I think we need to pull some receipts on that episode, can, Josh. Can, can we call it Can we call it the biggest Heisman snub ever? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, would, I would say before that, I know as an Oklahoma fan, I can think back to like Adrian Peterson. Uh, and then I'm trying to think. There was a couple other guys that I thought were pretty big I, snubs. I think Christian McCaffrey, yeah. uh, um, when Derrick Henry won it, and Christian McCaffrey was yeah. Mr. Oh, yeah, Do absolutely. It all. Yeah, that and was definitely that was definitely that was a big one. one. Man, that's that's a very comparable one to this year, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, because yeah, it's it's not it's not the same whenever you're looking at the the wins and all that, you know, win, the winning total. But I mean, it's the same when you think you got the same same position battling it out, uh, and then yep. you know you you know I mean just looking at that, it's it's. 
one of those things where I think people are too focused on stats for Jaden Daniels rather than everything else outside of stats. Stats only tell just a portion of the, the story. They don't tell the whole thing. But man, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know that I can look at anyone else and just think, man, that was the biggest snub. If, if he wins Monday night, if Michael Penix goes out here and throws for, for, you know, 275, 300 yards and beats Michigan, they need to walk into Jaden Daniels' house, take his Heisman Trophy, and ship it to Seattle, Washington. Kick him Honestly. on the way out. It, I <laughs> mean, it, it's, 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 it's not even close, man. Like, what that dude did against Texas was unreal. And, and by the way, people were saying that they were going to lose to Texas by oh, yeah. two scores. You know, they were huh. saying that Texas was going to blow them out. So – that that's my biggest thing, man. Is in the trenches. Can Michigan get pressure on Penix? Uh, can can they force him off his spot? I I feel like Texas forced him off his spot a few times, and he made plays with his legs. Well, that's that's and, the thing. Yeah, you you were talking about how he he just completely sliced and diced Texas. Mm-hmm. Jeremy, you and I were talking about it. Texas did really good at penetrating that line and getting mm-hmm. back there against a very good offensive line. Only eleven sacks all season long from this mm-hmm. Washington offensive line. So, I mean, they, they were really good at getting back there, but Michael Penix, Penix wants to work in between the tackles, and that's exactly what he does. He finds a way, and the quickest release I may have ever seen in my life. The dude just looks like he flicks a wrist, and it flies 50 yards downfield. Uh, you know, he's just got tremendous arm talent, you know, just uh, overall just IQ above anyone else. Plus, we've talked about it, too. He's not a runner because he doesn't want to re-injure himself, and he's very smart with that. Uh, but then he's able to use his legs, and that really caught Texas off guard a few times. But, uh, Jeremy, what are you most excited about looking forward to this matchup here in the national championship game? I mean, my big thing that I'm really looking forward to for seeing – for this national championship game is what JJ McCarthy can realistically do against Washington's defense. And then it's definitely been a a thing that we've obviously said a lot this year that I know I've obviously said it, that Michigan hasn't played anybody good. We haven't seen what Michigan can really do in these types of situations, but like, I'm going to be completely honest with you, everybody, obviously I've ate my own words and, I will admit that obviously going against Ohio State that was going to be the first that was going to be the first step of this road and we all saw the outcome for Michigan and to me it just seemed like during that game alone that Michigan was was controlling Ohio State but then after their um, their lineman I can't remember his name that got hurt and then he got off the field. Then mm-hmm. they went ahead and on that next drive, and then they scored that touchdown from um, from Corum. Then he's just been he's just been a complete animal this entire season for Michigan's running abilities. And just looking at this overall aspect, uh, going against a good Washington defense for being able to control not only J.J. McCarthy, but being able to stop Blake Corn for their running game, that's going to be the two biggest things that I'm going to be expecting out of Washington to try and stop Michigan. But obviously, now looking on the other side of the ball for Washington, obviously, is just don't get don't get bottled up in, in penalty trouble or don't even get bottled up in sack problems just because if you get in that kind of mindset. We've seen Michael Penny's Jr. where the very few sacks that he's taken, obviously, all year, like – you usually see some quarterbacks make mental errors or make mistakes after the after they take a big sack or whatever the situation is, and then it just seems like from there on that they're just making mistakes, little mental mistakes throughout the entire rest of the game. But for Michael Penix Jr., he's just he's just cool as a cucumber, and he just doesn't let it bother him, and he's just going to keep playing that physical game that we're used to seeing Michael Penix Jr. do, and. It's definitely going to be a big thing for Michigan's defense and their secondary for Michael Penix Jr.'s arm. Like you said, Josh, he literally makes it look so effortlessly. Then if I were to try and do that same thing, I said this last episode, if I were to try and make it that effortlessly, I'd probably want to throw like five or ten yards. That He just makes it seem like nothing. And I'm just like, how do you get that unbelievable talent? But obviously that comes from years of practice and just being able to do it with the great quarterback coaches and just keep putting time and effort into it all year. But I mean, it's definitely going to be a fun time to what I see for this national championship game. So obviously, and going back to what Blake just obviously said, it's going to be 
Michigan's offense versus Washington's defense, then vice versa for Washington's offense versus Michigan's defense. So it's yeah. definitely going to be a really, really fun time. So I, I think it's going to be a really, really interesting championship game. Yeah, and this may not necessarily be – I'm trying to think throughout the year. It, it, it may not necessarily be the best offense they've seen all year, although I would say it is. Um, but it's most definitely, without a doubt, the most versatile offense that they've seen because definitely. they can run the ball. They, they can. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they may they may act like they can't, and they may they may act like they're a, a pass first. They they do pa- pass to set up the run, and and they're very good at it. Um, but they've got dudes all over the place. You brought them up, you know, Polk and McMillan and uh, Roma Dunze, and then they've got that big dude Culp that comes across middle. I, I don't, I don't know how you're supposed to stop that. And then you've got uh, Dylan Johnson coming out of the backfield. That dude is an animal. Uh, and then just Michael Penix alone creates something indifferent. I, I mean, is if his draft stock doesn't go up, I, I, I said this from the beginning, beginning of the year when I'm ranking my quarterbacks going into the NFL. Michael Penix Jr. was always at the top of my list. The the dude, I mean, so can you guys ex- explain something? Because Jeremy and I are lefties. I never understood the the, critici- the criticism for lefties. They say it's because of the spin on the ball. It's harder for dudes to catch yeah. it. Mm-hmm. D- do you understand yep. that that logic? How is that? Um, I guess the way that people um, explain it with Tua, is the ball like spins away from you? Um, but what if you're on the other side like, of the field? So if, if you're on this side coming in, it's spinning yeah. into you. But it's if you're on this side, it's spinning yeah. away from you. So wouldn't wouldn't that be the same with with the righty? I don't. I, I, I mean, I've I've heard them explain it. It just doesn't really make sense to me. Yeah, like they they say like when like Tua when he throws a deep ball, like it tails away from like like the just the tail action. Well, I don't know. I, I, I will. I will I don't, say. I, don't really. I will say they may design footballs for right-handed throwers. I, I don't know if there's some 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 design to it where the you know the the small details on the ball spin better for a, for a righty. Because I have noticed I have a hard time with some balls throwing a spiral where righties can throw it throw a spiral just fine. And and mm-hmm. I mean I I don't yeah. normally have a problem with it. I used to be a pretty good pretty good at throwing a ball back in the day. My thing, my thing, my whole thing with the the lefty conversation is, uh, you know, Tua doesn't have a problem with it. Uh, Mike Vick never had a problem with it. We can, you know, throw a few more on that list that never had a problem with it. The only thing that questions me with his draft stock is his knee surgeries. So, yeah, you know, true. he's been hurt multiple times, and and I think that. But could he be hasn't what been hurt the last two seasons, hurt. and and it's because of his play style and what he's able to do. I think. I think he's he's his IQ is so high. I I, I just I don't think I, I know it's a it's an adjustment going into the end of the NFL. I don't think he's a first year starter just looking at at the league and who's going to pick him up. I don't think he would be a first year starter. So you give him some time to adjust to that speed. I think I think he stands a good chance. So here's my thing with that, and this is I think this is what is going to hurt him in the draft if he's not a first year starter. He's already what twenty four years old. True. So, mm-hmm. so he's not going to start in the NFL till he's twenty five or twenty six years old. So you're spending all of this money on a guy who, let's be honest, the life in the NFL. If you make it past thirty one, thirty two years old, like you're doing a hell of a job. But I mean, have the, have the last couple of years with injuries not made you? really want a very good backup QB. You yes. think of you think of the 49ers yes. and you think of uh you know if the, if the Ravens were to lose Lamar again um because we saw what what tur- yeah. what that turned into uh if if mm-hmm. you know the Bengals actually got very lucky with Jake Browning I think he adjusted very fast. Um you know and, yeah, and guys like did. that or you know if 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 uh Josh Allen were to go down, if Jalen Hurts goes down, who steps in for him because Marcus Mariota is not doing the trick. Uh, you know, it's, it's all over the place. Even. Yeah, yeah, Pat Mahomes. If you don't have Taylor Heineke mm-hmm. back there to save your save your uh, your game, you don't go on to the AFC Championship game. So, uh, I mean, how sweet would that have been for the Bengals to have had to play the Jacksonville Jaguars instead? But <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Just looking at it, I, I think I think if if one thing is certain, you may not ever need him. And you, it's it's kind of like 
the way I, I explain the Second Amendment in America. I don't want to ever have to use my firearms. I don't. I don't want to have to use them. But I want yeah. it there just in case I do, and I want it to be reliable if I do need to use it. So, I mean, that's it's kind of the same way, same way with a backup QB, and it's it's funny because they're gunslingers. Um, but <laughs> so pro Second Amendment in the NFL as well. But uh, looking at these two teams, it's the 14th time that these two teams have met in the in history of these uh, of the two teams. Uh, Michigan has won the last two meetings, which I assumed was both in the Rose Bowl, um, but this was actually both being uh, or the last one was in Ann Arbor, and I think the time before that was in Ann Arbor as well. Um, but this last meeting was in 2021. Michigan won 31 to 10 with a different head coach from Washington and everything. So this is a totally different squad that Michigan's seeing. Where Washington's, you know, because they're a new squad coming in, it's going to feel like they're seeing a new a new team as well. Uh, so, you know, seeing that, uh, that's that's one thing to look at. Uh, I, I was trying to look up national championships, and I don't really trust national championships because we were talking about that. Uh, both these teams have claimed national championships, uh, but I don't really know how many of those are actually played for because uh, we were talking about how the last one for Michigan was 1997, but I don't really believe that because that's a claimed national championship, and Nebraska and Tennessee actually played in 1997. Uh, and so, you know, just looking at that one, I don't think I would really count that as a national championship. I don't really understand how that works. If you're not holding up the trophy at the end of the day, uh, you're just UCF yep. down there in Orlando and having a good time. But uh, yep. Washington also has two claimed national championships in 1960 and 1991, um, but the first time for both these teams winning the college football playoffs, that does matter because, first of all, being the first time you won, it's also modern era. Uh, and Michigan, they lost uh, twice before. Washington got in once and lost once before. So both of these teams finally getting a victory going in. Uh, it's two teams that are next year going to be in the Big Ten. They're going to have a rematch next year. Uh, another, another thing to think about for Michigan – uh, I'll see if I can pull it up real quick because I, I know I saved it. Um, something that's crazy for Michigan, you know, we talked about how weak their schedule was this year. They're going to play uh, Washington right here in the national championship and then very uh, going right into next year, very early in the season, they're going to play Texas on September 7th. Then they're going to play Washington Ooh. again on October 5th. Then they're going to play Oregon mm. on November 2nd. Then they're going to play Ohio State Ooh. on November 30th. So, I mean, looking, looking at, at, mm. at Michigan, boy, if you – if you want to be battle tested, that's the way to do it right there. And it's not going to be the same Michigan team. They're going to lose some guys. So we'll have to see what, what that all shapes up to be. But I mean, looking at Michigan, they've got a lot. And uh, I think, I think this all boils up to uh, this game. It, it all boils down to a very fun matchup. And I think it's going to be uh, how Michigan can react and how they can uh, kind of adjust to this Washington offense because there's going to be a lot of adjustments that are going to be needed. Uh, but the last time that we saw a number one versus number two in the national championship game, I think that's what's most exciting about this is that the top two teams showed that they deserved those rankings. The last time we saw that was in 2019 when Clemson rolled the tide 44 to 16, uh, pun intended. You know, so out of ten college football playoffs, this will only be the fourth time that we witness top two ranked teams against each other. Uh, the the other three times it was Alabama versus Clemson, back whenever they both had dynasties. Uh, one thing I want to ask you guys because I think this 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 game comes down to it. Uh, I, I think this is going to be a close game. I think I, I think it's going to be uh, Michigan wants to control the time of possession, and I think it's Washington wants to turn this into a shootout. Um, mm -hmm. before I get too far, too far into that though, I need to mention our other sponsor and that is factor, uh, guys factor is an amazing product and one that we definitely want to make sure that we share with you guys. Uh, you know, when you think about this new year and with your resolutions, you want to get started your, with your resolutions with factor. So you're ready for the new year and all the resolutions that you've made for this upcoming year. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery service takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in this new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. Yes, that's right. They deliver it right to your door. It doesn't get easier than that. You don't have to go to the store. The store. Uh, you, can, you can just have it right there and ready to go. With over 35 meals to choose from each week, including options like keto, uh, calorie smart, vegan, 
plus v- veggie, uh, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons. They're constantly adding on new meals that you can try on. You'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. When things get hectic, uh, Factor is flexible. You can change your order up every week with plans from 4 to 18 meals per week, or you can even pause and reschedule, uh, and they, they can you can move your delivery times around to fit what you need. That's the amazing thing. I've used Factor in the past, and now I'm using it again because uh, them being a sponsor for us, and they, they're, they truly are amazing. They're very easy. Uh, you can pop it in the microwave for just two minutes, and it's cooked and ready to go. Uh, otherwise, if you want a, a more flavorful, uh, maybe a, a healthier option, you can pop it in the, the oven. All you got to do is just tear off that, that, fl- that film, pop it in the oven for seven minutes, and it's ready to go. So easy. Delicious meals. Uh, they're they're portioned outright um, because if you're like me, I know I'm a skinny guy, but if you're like me, sometimes you just don't know when to stop ordering food or when to stop eating food, and you just eat too much. Factor makes that easy because they have it portioned off for you just right. It's very healthy for you. Very delicious food, uh, and then on top of that, their smoothies, uh, their their uh, protein shakes, all of that. They've got so much more, and they even have breakfast options. So go check them out, guys. You can check out Factor and try it today. You can go to factormeals.com slash rising250 and use that code rising250 and get yourself 50% off. There's no better way to get your new year started than to make sure that you cut out all of the stress of planning meals and all of this extra uh, crap that you got to do whenever it comes to to sitting down around the table uh, at night. You can just go to factormeals.com slash rising250 250 and use that code rising 250 for 50% off. So again, head to factormeals.com slash R I S I N G T O five zero and use that code rising 250 and get yourself 50% off. That's an amazing deal and you don't want to miss out on it. So again, go to factormeals.com slash rising 250, use that code and get yourself 50% off an amazing deal. Um, but guys, let's get into it. And something I wanted to ask you guys about this game, because looking back in, at, at, at history, we all know that history repeats itself. So I want to see if you guys think history will repeat itself today, uh, or I guess and on, on Monday. The national championship blowouts that we've had in the past. We go back to 23, we had Georgia win 65-7. to Go back to 22, we had uh, Georgia win 33-18 to over Alabama. Uh, back in 21, we had, had Alabama beat OSU 53-24. to Back in 2020, we had LSU whoop up on Clemson 42-25. to And in 19, we had Alabama or, uh, Clemson beat Alabama 44-16. to uh, Are we going to see another blowout like this, this again? Or do we finally have a, a very good and a very close matchup on our hands like we saw in 2018 when uh, Alabama and Georgia took it to overtime? Uh, how do you feel about, about the blowouts here, Jeremy? I think this is actually going to be a tighter game than what we've seen opposite from past national championships. Like what you just said, Josh, I think that this is going to be, I know people are saying that Michigan's the favorite to win the national championship. I think it's like by four and a half or close to five or whatever the situation is. But you look at both of these teams and what they've brought to the table this entire season so far. And it's just been, it's been an absolute great year for obviously both Washington and Michigan. And I, as much as I, as much as I think with what the past championships have, like you just obviously said being blossed, I think this is finally going to be the year that it's going to be a close one just because you get two great teams, like I said, trying to fight it out. And it's going to be, I think it might be honestly like another Michigan Ohio State game to where it's going to be really really close and tight, and then you finally get that breakthrough. But it's not going to be busting down the walls, and I'm going to run up a scoreboard. But I think it's def- I I would not be surprised if I think it may be not even a ten point game if I had to say that. But I think I, like that. I think it's going to be pretty close, but. At the end of the day, we're going so to we're, find out on Monday. So we're going to natty like it's 2018. Uh, Blake, mm-hmm. uh, do you got to get going here? No, I'm good for, for a couple more minutes. Okay. Uh, well, I, f- I figured, you know, just let me know, and I'll, I'll let you run through <coughs> and finish it yeah. out. But do you think this is going to be a, an, another blowout kind of national championship, or do you think it's going to be a closer matchup between these two teams? I think it's going to be a closer matchup. Uh, I do. I, I think this is going to be an excellent game. I do not think you're going to see Georgia and TCU one bit. Uh, I think Michael Penix can keep 
Washington in this football game. And I think Washington's defense is better than what people are giving them credit for. Now, Facts. can J.J. McCarthy also, like Jeremy mentioned, can J.J. McCarthy make the plays uh, for Michigan like he did against Alabama? I think he can. I, I think, you know, J.J. McCarthy was getting a lot of hate on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it before the Alabama, uh, before the Alabama game. And people were saying, Oh, well, JJ McCarthy is going to be the reason they lose this game. JJ McCarthy can't make the big play. JJ McCarthy played his tail off against Alabama. Yeah. And and, that one handed uh, snag to yeah. heave it downfield and a, a perfect throw on top of that. Just, I, I mean, he, he, he doesn't put up the big numbers, you know, and I think that's why people kind of get frustrated in his game is because he's not going to go out there and throw for 400 yards, but that's not what Michigan does. Michigan runs the football. Right? I mean, th- they play slimy, just physical, nasty football in the trenches. That's their game. And I'll be honest with you, they killed Alabama with the motion game. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it just – it picked Alabama apart, man, the 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 – the misdirections and and uh, the rub routes, the crossers and everything, it, it killed Alabama. It killed them, and that's the reason you so many you saw so many busted coverages the other night with Michigan guys being wide open. I can tell you something right now. You remember the flea flicker that they ran and Corum couldn't get the ball back to McCarthy. Yeah, all right. He was wide open down the left sideline. If Blake Corum pitches that ball back to McCarthy, that's a touchdown. And I, and I felt like he was trying to sell it too much and flip it back too late too. So I mean, it, it, it's kind of I mean, it was definitely it was definitely a good a good uh, pickup by Alabama to kind of close in over there. But I th- I mean I thought it was a great play call. You just didn't execute it, you know. Yeah, and yeah. and you know you watched the film of that game, man. And and I mean it was a touchdown. And then Michigan missed that field goal and everything. You know, uh, I believe that was a drive later or something. Uh, and, and you really just thought that Michigan was dead. You know, I, I mean, when they missed that field goal, um, Milro fumbled. They get it. They don't do nothing with it. They missed the field goal. I was like, okay, well, now Alabama's about to do what, you know, they normally do to everybody, and they're just going to get the get the python strength and strangle you to death, you know. And Michigan's defense, they stood up and – they made the plays. They made stops. And that's something that we haven't seen with Alabama in the fourth quarter because Alabama has always been that team to get you to the fourth quarter and just wear you out. So when I look at Washington and you know everybody's going to be disrespecting you, can you stand up in the fourth quarter against Michigan? Because now they're going to try to strangle you in the fourth quarter. They're going to try to slowly wear you down. They're going to hand the ball off to Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards, and and they're going to have J.J. McCarthy uh, doing what he does at quarterback. Can you withstand that for for the four quarters of play? Um, I, I just think this is going to be a heck of a matchup, Josh. I do. I think it's going to be a great national championship game. You know, I hate that an SEC team's not playing in it this year. It sucks, but I think these two teams are, you know, I th- they they earned it, man. Like Washington, people can say what they want to about Washington. They're a legitimate, solid football team. Mm-hmm. I don't care about though they play in the Pac-12 because you know that's the argument. That's the argument that people always want to use is, oh, they played in the Pac-12. Dog, they won. They won all their games. Like, they, they definitely had some some games where they they should have won bigger than they did, but they never. Washington has kind of played very confidently, and and I've heard the comparisons to TCU last year. I don't I don't see that because TCU kind of struggled their way to to victories, where Washington just handled their business the way that they needed to. Yep. Uh, and and I I think there's there's times when they're when they're not quite smart in how they they run it, and I'm, I'll probably talk on that here in a little bit too. But uh, let's go to keys to victory. If you, if you're the coach for either of these teams, what do you think you need to do? Let's start off with Michigan, uh, Blake. I'll let you start us off with it. The key to victory uh, for Michigan is to keep Washington's offense off the field. So Michigan's going to have to run the football, like Josh mentioned, keep time of possession, run the football, 
control the line of scrimmage, and do not let Michael Penix Jr. get the ball in his hands. Yeah, I mean, keep it minimal. Uh, keep it, keep him on that sideline as long as you possibly can. So that's going to mean that Michigan needs to take the the seven to eight minute drives, those twelve to thirteen play drives, and you're going to have to march down the field and, and get points out of it. Uh, another thing is Michigan's going to have to score touchdowns. Michigan's going to have to score touchdowns. Field goals are not going to cut it against Washington. You're not going to beat Washington kicking field goals. Not going to happen. So in the red zone, you're going to have to score. You're going to have to produce just like you did against Alabama. That's my keys to the game for Michigan. Wisconsin, you're going to have to turn this into a shootout in my opinion. You're going to have to – I mean, Michael Penix is going to have to flick the pill, brother. And Washington's going to have to make the big play vertically down the field to kind of soften this Michigan defense because Michigan's going to – they're going to bring pressure on Penix. I truly believe that they're going to try to heat him up. So you're going to have to bring – you're going to have to make the play over the top to loosen that defense up. And uh, I think Washington's going to have to try to, you know, run and gun, fast pace, and and, uh, try to keep this Michigan defense on its heels, man. Try to keep, you know – Keep the. I want to see Washington go tempo, man, and keep up the pace, and really have Michigan that Michigan defense uh, second guessing themselves. So, like I said, I think we're in for a doozy, man. I think it's going to be a, a hell of a game. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with you, uh, Jeremy. What do you got for Michigan here? What's their key to victory? Blake said to keep Washington off the field. That's going to be the big thing for last thing anybody wants to see if you're a Michigan fan is Michael Penix Jr. with a ball in his hand just because we've obviously seen his talent and what he can be able to do. But another thing that I want to say is um, Mich- the, another big key thing I think for Michigan winning the national championship is their composure just because we've seen Michigan throughout this entire year and what just the entire Michigan organization has gone through with the, with the hardball, uh, with the hardball stuff, and that that's another big thing that people are just thinking, oh, it's Michigan. The, they've just gone through another year, and like, no, they haven't. They have. Jim Harbaugh hasn't been at every on on the sideline for every single game for Michigan, and their their intern coach that they had, he controlled Michigan like like we usually see Harbaugh do, and he did a phenomenal job controlling Michigan. And looking at this situation. Don't get into penalty trouble because I know you're going to be going into the national championship game, and the last thing you want to see either of these two teams do is lose their composure just because, like I said, you don't want to get into penalty trouble and then it come back and bite you in the butt. And I'm just really looking forward to this game on Monday just because it's definitely going to be a shootout. But like I said, keep your composure and don't let Michael Panks Jr. get the ball if you're a Michigan fan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, to go along with you guys, I think controlling the ball is big for Michigan. Another thing is don't make mistakes. Don't make key mistakes, uh, you know, and especially when we look at that special teams. You know, for, first starting off with J.J. McCarthy, first play of the game, interception really. You, mm-hmm. you threw an interception. It didn't count, and you got a mulligan. You got lucky. But, you know, outside of that, that was, a, that was a big mistake. And it was just not making the throw that you should have made the whole time. Uh, I didn't understand his his thought process through any of that, but you know, going outside outside of that, special teams, uh, the special teams coordinator too. I was looking it up to to figure out who who their their special teams coach is, and I don't know how to say this last name. It's Jay Har Harbaugh. J- oh, Harbaugh. So that may be pretty hard to fire a guy with the last name Harbaugh, but Jay needs to figure it out. Uh, he needs to get his team together and kick their butts for what they did and making that game as close as they made it. Uh, Cause you had yep. the, the turnover on the, on the uh, punt return that you should have never gone up and tried to grab. Then you had, you, you had the other one where you pinned your team back on the one yard line when you had a chance to, to have a drive to get down there into field goal position real quick. If you, if you're lucky, but instead you put your team on the one yard line when you should not have fielded that. Uh, so, I mean, just terrible, terrible. Uh, they just don't make mistakes. I think that's a big one for, for Michigan. Just I, I think the, the mistakes made that Alabama game a lot closer than it should have been in the Rose Bowl. But going over to Washington, uh, what do we got for Washington, Blake? What is, what's your key to victory for Washington? Um, I, I know I said that, that they need to make it a shootout, but I, I'll give you another one. Um, I, I think 
Washington has to force JJ McCarthy into a couple turnovers. I think I think that that if Washington wants to win this game, their defense is going to have to force at least two turnovers and win the turnover battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think Washington, in their best case, is to get a turnover, have a short field, and not have to uh, not have to go very far for points, and and capitalize in the red zone. So. Like, I, I mean, I think that kind of all blends into making this thing a shootout. You want to really turn this thing into what TCU did last year. You want to force J.J. McCarthy into a turnover or two, work a short field, maybe get a pick six, and now you're cooking. Now Michigan's playing from behind the eight ball. And, and I don't think Michigan's comfortable from playing from behind. They no. haven't had to do it a whole lot. Now, they did do it in the Rose Bowl, and they did really well in that two-minute drive. But it's, it's, it's still not truly their game. Their game reminds me of the old Alabama teams back in the, the tens where they would just wear you down with the running game, little play-action pass, you know, and, and they just slowly strangled you. Um, I think if Washington can can do that, they force a couple turnovers and and work a short field and kind of turn this into what TCU did with Michigan last year. I think that's in their best uh, that's in their best interest for Monday night. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm kind of right there with you, really, on both of them. Because uh, first, I mean, you're you're talking about you're talking about making turnovers, and I, I think committing to slow down the run is a great way to force those turnovers because if you stop that run and force them to pass, I think Washington's secondary is good enough to do something with it. That I mean, their, their secondary, I don't think they get enough love. I know I know that they, they let teams rack up yards on them, but I think they, they try to be that bend but don't break, and I've talked about that plenty of times even with Oregon too. Um, you know, that bend but don't break defense that you're – we're going to let you throw it around the yard, but we're going to stop you. Uh, and whenever it really matters the most, we're gonna we're gonna make these key plays when it matters the most. Uh, and so I, I think I think committing to slowing down the run is a big thing, uh, and then you know scoring at will, kind of going into you know you you saying make it a shootout because a shootout plays into Washington's favor way more than Michigan. You're, you're, you can't you can't keep up with Washington. We saw that against Oregon. The first time that they played against Oregon, everyone thought it was extremely stupid that they went down and scored as fast as they did, but that's mm. what that's what they like to do. That's what they like to do, and you know what? It works for them. And guess guess how many times it worked for them to score at will this year? Every damn time. So yeah. just score at will uh, because we know you can. And uh, like I said, if it, if it turns into a shootout, it's Washington's favor. But, Jeremy, how about you? Key victory for Washington. Key victory for Washington is control the edge against Michigan's run game. Have, uh, have Braylon Trice <clears throat> control that edge and not let Blake Corum – get outside the edges and let them make big plays. And even for their defensive line, they needed to control the entire, they need to control the entire game for Michigan just because if you let JJ McCarthy get rolling here, you're going to be in trouble. And um, <clears throat> I mean, for, for Washington, obviously, like I said, if we've seen what Michigan can do on the run game and Blake Corm, like I said earlier, he's a dog and he's been, he's been playing and he, I love saying that now just because Blake got me hooked on saying he's a dog. And um, <laughs> literally, he's just been flat out. Just He's been putting up unbelievable numbers, and he set up New Michigan, um, New Michigan record this year for having the most touchdowns. And literally, if, if Michigan doesn't get their running game going in, they they get stopped by J- – um, excuse me. If, if the Michigan game don't get rolling and J.J. McCarthy isn't going to be able to get – going in his motions and let the defense for Washington control a game. I realistically think that'll be a walk in the park for Washington just to walk out there with the national championship. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, looking at the, this this game, man, I, I think it's going to be a fun one. Um, I'm very excited. It's going to be a, a good uh, good Monday for us because, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I, at least Blake and I will be able to to get in there and have a, a great interview. And we're going to be able to meet uh, Jonathan Isaac as long as everything goes well there. On uh, have that that'll be ready for you guys next Thursday. Uh, so make sure to tune in next Thursday morning to see that. Um, but then, of course, right after that, going to, uh, straight into the national championship game. 
Uh, looking at the line right now, it looks like Michigan is a four and a half point favorite. The points total is, is looking like 56 points right now uh, on DraftKings. Mm. And then we've got the money line sitting at minus 192 for Michigan, plus 160 for Washington. Blake, what's your pick for this game? <sighs> oh, man. Um, tough one. Tough one, tough one. I want to pick Washington because I don't like Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> and, um, and, the, and, you know, they they cheated and everything, whatever. But at the end of the day, I've always believed that defense wins championships. Mm-hmm. And I think Michigan's defense is just a little too good for what Washington is about to see Monday night. I think Michigan's defense really surprised me with how physical they were against Alabama. And that's kind of been a knock against the Big Ten here recently uh, when they match up with SEC teams is you think the Big Ten's big and physical and they're slimy and and just downright dirty in the trenches, but they've been getting bullied. They've been getting bullied by every SEC team they've played. And Michigan, they stood the task, man, and they they, they bowed their neck, and, and they really proved to everybody that, hey, we were the more physical team. That's why I was always against them this year. I just didn't think they were physical enough in the trenches. Like, So when you go up against Georgia or Alabama, you're going to get smacked. And – that's the difference in in Monday night to me is I just think Michigan's a little bit more physical than Washington. And I think Michigan's defense is just a little too good. Um, you know, and I, I got to give J.J. His, his flowers, man. J.J. McCarthy deserves some love because, like I said earlier, I feel like in the media he kind of got – you know, he kind of gets downed and everything because, you know, he doesn't put up the eye-popping stats and, you know, he doesn't he doesn't throw for 350 a game and all this stuff. But if I want somebody to lead my football team, I'm looking at a guy like J.J. McCarthy, man. Uh, I, I just think he's he's got that dog in him. He's got he's got uh, that leadership, that role. You know, the guy that wears the C on his chest. You know, I, that is J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, I think I think you said it well too because I I don't feel like he's got the talent to be a national championship quarterback. Yeah, but he's got the dog in him to be a national championship quarterback, and I think that sets guys apart because I don't I don't think I yep. think like Max Duggan, Max Duggan wasn't really a, a you know a, a top performer, but he just had a a, a dog in him that wasn't going to quit. Uh, yep. I, I see a lot of the, the similarities between him and him and uh, JJ McCarthy. Yeah, Dougie Fresh was special, man. That Dougie Fresh, um, I don't know, you know, I know they got blasted in the natty, but he taught that me wasn't how to on him. You. Yeah, I mean, dude, real quick on that, that on the Dougie Fresh train, we started on TCU last year early, early. Like, we were like, hey, that's a wagon right there, and – we would just put money on TCU every week and just hammer TCU. And, I mean, we made a ton of money off of TCU last year. And we started this thing with, you know, the Dougie Fresh. We started calling him Dougie Fresh. And, you know, and um, I did an interview with a TCU radio guy, and I told him about it. And I was like, man, we've been following TCU so closely and everything. And uh, he, he got us on – you know, the, the Max Duggan story and everything. I didn't know anything about it. And, uh, dude's a dog. Yeah, man, dude's a dog. And he was just, he was that guy for them all year, that leader. And the guy that, like I said, wears the C on his chest. And I think that's a great comparison because it, it rolls over to JJ McCarthy. I don't think JJ McCarthy is an NFL quarterback. Um, could he turn out to be one? Yeah, he could. But I just don't think he's an NFL quarterback. But he's one of those guys where Michigan is going to look back in 20 years and they're going to be like, man, that dude right there, he had it, man. Like, like he he was that guy. And, uh, you know, Blake Corm, 
another one, a workhorse. Like, I mean, the 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 runs against Alabama and the second effort and uh, just his his leadership on that offense, uh, incredible. You know, um, Roman Wilson. Yeah, I, I was I think, just about to say Roman Wilson's another one yeah, because he yeah. did, that dude just doesn't doesn't. Doesn't you know up. he doesn't he doesn't really fit the boat for a top wide receiver the way he is. Yeah. But did you see the catch against Nebraska that he had? The viral catch not. totally mossed. I mean, Nebraska could not have done anything except turn around. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, anything better other than turn around. And mm-hmm. the dude just completely like that was probably the the most difficult moss kind of catch that I've ever seen. Uh, just it just totally reached all the way around him and barely had his fingertips on the ball. Like his arms weren't long enough to reach it. And in the back of the end zone. Anyways. Yeah, he, he still comes down with it. I mean, just, yeah, you'll have to look that one up. But, I mean, they, they've got a, they've got some dogs over there in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do, man. Um, I'm going to get out of here, and I will leave you guys with a score prediction. I think Michigan wins this game. Give me 34 Give me Michigan 34. Oh, man. This is tough. You're, you're damn close to what I'm thinking then. This is tough. This is tough. Give me Michigan 34, Washington 30. Okay, you're, you're really close to what I'm thinking. Uh, so, yeah, yeah it's, we're, we're pretty pretty damn close there. But Blake, <laughs> I, know, right, I know you got your, your Auburn show to jump over to, so appreciate you hopping on this morning, man. Yeah, Thank man, I, I appreciate y'all, I appreciate y'all doing this and uh, squeezing this in for me. So, yeah, uh, you know, a, a lot of things happened at Auburn yesterday, and uh, and that's why we had to cancel our show because the things hasn't they hadn't happened yet, and then mm-hmm. they ha- happened yesterday. So we had to, you know, go today and everything, so we would have something to talk about. So, um, yeah, man, a lot of things went down, a lot of changes coming to Auburn. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yeah, take care. Okay. All right, right, Jeremy, going over to you now. Uh, I'm going to have you make your pick again. The line is sitting there. I guess the spread is sitting at four and a half favorites for Michigan. So it's sitting at four and a half. uh, And then total 56 and money line minus 192 for Michigan plus 160 for Washington. What's your pick for this game? (sighs) This is. This is the hardest decision I've had to make so far this year, and we just started. Um, I'm going to go off a little bit of what Blake was saying. Washington has been an unbelievable team to be reckoned with this year. They got plenty of weapons, and they got unbelievable, unbelievable talent. But uh, Michigan's defense – as we're used to seeing Michigan defenses have been unbelievably stellar. So I've always loved saying this phrase defense truly does win you a championship in this situation. And now we're coming down to a really good saying for that win in a national championship here. As much as I would love and sincerely mean love to see Michael Panks jr pull off the Hail Mary of a season to go out. I don't think he's going to get it done. I think that Michigan's going to control it and they're going to, they're really going to let Michigan control the game and let them get most of the ball control and (sighs) give me old go blue here for Michigan. And then for a score prediction for myself, I was thinking, 34-31 or 34-28 to 28 for a prediction for Michigan, but I'm more leaning towards the 34-31, the come down maybe to a field goal, obviously, for the final. So I think it's going to be so, pretty dang Yeah, close. so we're, we're all kind of picking Washington to, to at least cover the spread then. I, th- I think I think we're all kind of on the same boat there. Um, mm-hmm. For me, I look at how I picked for the, for the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl. And the way mm-hmm. I picked with those was my mind was telling me Texas, Alabama. My heart mm-hmm. was saying, man, I just think there's something about Michigan and Washington that they could pull it off. But I mm-hmm. said, you know what? I'm going to be smart because you don't bet with your heart. You bet with your mind. Mm-hmm. 
and kind of pulling R. Kelly here, you know, my mind <laughs> is telling me no with Washington, but my body, my but heart, body. my heart is telling me yes. I I don't know what it is about this Washington team. They stole my they stole my heart from the beginning. When when they first pulled in Penix, I was like, man, I'm excited to see how this is going to work. They got a brand new coach, so they're probably not going to do too much. But man, Kalen DeBoer, ah, man, I I should I should pull up Kalen DeBoer's record and, and tell it to you later on. Uh, I won't do it right now, just for the sake of time. But that the dude it knows how to be a head coach. Uh, backing mm-hmm. all the way up into NAIA when he was a coach back then. Uh, I mean, the dude just doesn't know how to lose. First year with with Washington last year uh, has an amazing season. Second second year brings him to a national championship in the toughest season of the Pac-12 uh, and gets this far. I do agree with you guys, and my my mind is telling me, my my brain is telling me to pick Michigan because it's just the smart move. My brain is telling me that you don't go against Vegas this year. You just agree with Vegas and tell them, here's my money, and they're still going to take it regardless because they just know how to do that to everyone. Somehow they trick everyone into it. But the line sitting at four and a half, I like. I 100% want to take Washington plus four and a half, and I think we've all kind of agreed on that. My prediction is more like a 34-38, and it really could swing either way. But I'm I'm not going to bet, bet with my mind because it didn't work pretty much Almost all season, my, my brain was just wrong on so many accounts in college football, uh, and especially in the NFL. I just feel like my, you know, my 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 mind is is you know don't trust what the brain tells you. Don't trust the stats. Don't trust the the logic and reasoning when it comes to betting on these games. I'm gonna go mm-hmm. with my heart, and I'm just gonna say Washington wins 38-34. Uh, I think they turn this into a higher scoring game up in the 30s, mm-hmm. and that's that's what Washington wants. I think they have one of those. Last minute uh, drives where they score way too quick. Michigan comes up very similar to what we saw against uh, against what was that Texas. Washington's Washington State. We saw it against Oregon the first time around, uh, and then we saw it against again against Texas. I think we're going to see that again from Washington where they score too quick. Uh, Michigan tries to come back. They make a key mistake somewhere throughout the game that is really the deciding factor. And I think mm-hmm. I think Washington wins this game. That's what I'm going to go with on my pick because. Why not just let my heart rule for the last game of the season, the biggest game of the season, the national championship, coming down to it at 6.35 uh, on Jan- Monday, January 8th. So make sure to tune in. It's going to be an amazing game. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. I know I might have to hop over a little bit. Uh, I was talking with the guys over from the Sports Scramble crew. I might have to hop over just a little bit, maybe at halftime or something like that, and talk to them about what's going on in the game. But, guys, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's this is one of the more exciting national championships that I can remember for a little while. You know, I think last year was really exciting because you saw TCU get in. It was a mm-hmm. bummer that they got absolutely obliterated. But yeah. then finally, you have Michigan and Washington, two teams who haven't been there since the '90s and beyond, uh, and so two teams that just haven't really been relevant in a very long time and so very exciting to see these two teams it's going to absolutely be an amazing game this episode to recap one single game took so much longer than i thought it could have but there was so much to talk about and so much excitement building up to this game we thank you all so much for tuning in if you're watching on on youtube make sure hit that subscribe button hit that like button as well that's a great way to help us out and comment down below who you think is going to win the 2024 national championship game is it going to be the number one one, Michigan Wolverines, or is it going to be the Go number blue. two, Washington Huskies? We want to know who you're rooting for, who you think is going to win. We want to know everything, all of your thoughts about this game leading up to Monday. Uh, so please comment down below. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, you can give us a five-star review. That is the best way to help us over there. And make sure to leave a review, too. We don't want to just see the five stars clicked and uh, you just leave it at that. Uh, although that does help us, we want to see what you guys have to say about the show. So mm-hmm. please let us know and, and give us your thoughts. Uh, we thank you all so much for all of the love, all of the support. We hope you enjoy the national championship game. And until next time.